Welcome to the vlog, y'all. My name is Linnea Nelson. I have had a myriad of GI issues in the past two years, and because of that, I have tried a lot of supplements, and I have 47 of those supplements which I have tried out here on the table in front of me, and I'm going to be reviewing every single one of them. I'm going to be rating them on a scale from 0 to 10 in two different categories. So the first category is going to be efficacy, and the second category is going to be the experience of taking them. So that's going to encompass taste, side effects, ability to stick with it, all of that goes into experience. And so we're going to be combining the efficacy score with the experience score, combining those two scores, and that will give us the rating for the supplement so that we can rank all 47 supplements. And we will put all of the information in the description because I I know 47 is a lot to keep track of when you're watching a YouTube video. Shall we get into it? So the way that I've arranged the supplements on the table is strategic because I've broken it down into different categories. We're going to start with this category. This is a protein supplement category for when I'm struggling to get enough calories in. This category is the herbal supplement category, which encompasses supplements for nausea, upper GI distress, and SIBO in the microbiome. So that's what this category is. These are probiotics and digestive enzymes. And then over in this sort of section is vitamins. And then vitamins leads us into laxatives, which leads us into electrolytes. And that is the full gamut of supplements that we're working with. Like I said, we're going to start with the protein supplements. I have tried supplements that are like pre-mixed protein shakes, but I'm not talking about those in this video. Just the powder, because that's what I had on the cupboard. All right, so starting with protein supplements, these are all powders, protein supplement powders. Let's start with Vega protein, because I tried this powder first back in 2021. And in terms of efficacy, I'm going to give it, oh, this is hard. This is harder than I thought it was gonna be. I'm going to give it a four because I did not digest this protein very well. It only has 100 calories per two scoops, although none of these are super high in calories. They're more about protein. I have had this for two years. I barely used any because I my, this made me feel really nauseous, over full, bloated. So it gets a four in terms of efficacy. In terms of experience, I would give it a five. It didn't empty my stomach well, but it did taste good. So the total score for this is a nine. Now, moving on to Kachava. This is the highest calorie of all of the protein powders that I'm gonna show. It is more of a meal replacement than a protein powder. It is full of superfoods. It has tons of vitamins. It's basically like a multivitamin protein supplement, calorie supplement. So it gets a lot of points for that reason. It also tastes really, really good. It tastes sweet, but I've also had it for a long period of time and barely used any. So in terms of efficacy, I'm gonna give it a seven. In terms of experience, I'm gonna have to give it a six. It's just really overly filling and it has so many ingredients that I feel that I don't digest it well, so I haven't used it a whole lot. So the total score is gonna be 13 for this one. This is the raw organic protein garden of life this is another one like pachava where it has a lot of ingredients in it it's got four or five with tons of vitamins it has a really good amino acid profile it is a lot lower calorie than cachava that only has 130 calories so it isn't a meal replacement just the protein powder this is another one that i've had for a couple of years and barely used any that's the case with so many of these supplements honestly i am going to give it a four in terms of efficacy because i think i use this the least of all the protein powders out on this table because i did not digest it well and it is low in calories and the taste is pretty mid so in terms of experience i'm also going to give it a four because i was nauseated bloated, didn't digest this well either, so it gets an eight. Moving on to New Zest Clean Lean Protein. This is just natural. It literally only has one ingredient and that is pea protein. They process it in a really careful way because sometimes plant proteins can have a lot of lethogens in them, which can be hard to digest. This is processed, so it doesn't have any lethogens in it. It has a very mild taste. It has 21 grams of protein per serving. I love this. I actually use this in my protein smoothies. I had it literally today. It packs 100 calories it just works so well for adding protein and adding a body to a smoothie. I'm going to give this a 9. It would get a 10 if it had a better taste. The taste isn't bad, it's just totally neutral. 
So I'm gonna give it a nine. I don't feel bloated, don't feel nauseous, it empties my stomach well, it has a source of protein, it gets a nine for efficacy. Experience, I'm gonna give it a 10. Like I have had no negative effects at all from this protein, so I give it a 10 in terms of experience, which means it gets a 19. All right, this is the next one. This is also made by Newsast, but it is their digestive support protein. So it doesn't only have pea protein in it. It also has a ton of probiotics and it has L-glutamine in it. It has an insane amount of probiotics. It has, I think it says some more on here, almost a billion probiotics, really close to a billion. It's almost too much probiotics in this. In terms of experience, same thing as with this other one. I don't get nauseous, don't get bloated. It empties my stomach really well. I digest it super well. I'm gonna give it a nine in terms of efficacy. Very good. In terms of experience, I have to give it a nine, not a 10, because this having so many extra probiotics in it, if I eat more than one serving of this in a day, it will upset my intestines. It's like an overload of probiotics. So if I eat one serving a day, this works perfectly. If I eat two servings in a day, my intestines are not gonna like it. So it gets a nine, the score is 18. So the last protein powder I'm gonna review is Vital Proteins Collagen Protein. I've actually gone through a good bit of this. I have used this a lot. I don't currently use it, but I've used it a lot in the past. I've put it in various things. I've put it in hot chocolate. I've put it in orange juice. I've put it in smoothies. It goes in a lot of different things. It has a very mild taste. I like it best in hot chocolate because it dissolves very well. This also digests very well for me. It does not make me nauseous. It does not make me bloated. In terms of efficacy, I'm going to give it an eight. And honestly, the reason it gets an eight is it's the lowest in calorie of all of these. It only has 70 calories. And additionally, it's just collagen. So it's pretty basic. I don't think it's as good as some of these plant proteins. So it gets an eight for efficacy. In terms of experience, I'm honestly also gonna give it an eight. I would go higher, but I have found that when I put in hot chocolate, which is my favorite application for it, it has a beefy smell when I initially dissolve it to put it in hot chocolate. And I do find that off-putting. So it gets an eight for experience, but otherwise I like this. Alrighty, so I have reorganized the protein powders from best to worst in terms of ranking. The prize for worst goes to raw organic protein from Garden of Life. Best, in my opinion, goes to New Zest clean lean protein, the plain flavor, literally just pea protein. Now we're gonna move on to herbal supplements. There are a lot. Poof, I'm already getting overwhelmed thinking about it. So in order to make it easier, let's start with the nausea remedies, which are in the front. We're gonna start with mints. This is called Simply Mints. These are really low in sugar compared to a lot of peppermints and breath mints. It all, they also have very simple ingredients. It's literally just cane sugar, peppermint oil, and calcium stirring. That's all that's in these. I tolerate them very well and if I'm feeling really nauseous and I have them in my purse, I can just grab a couple and eat them. In terms of efficacy though, I have to eat a lot of these in order to get my nausea down and if my nausea is really bad, it's not going to come down just from a peppermint candy. So in terms of efficacy, I will give these a 7. In terms of experience, I'm going to give them a 10 because I love mints. They taste really good. These get a 17. This is one of my favorite supplements on the entire table. It is called Not Now Nausea. It's made by Herb Pharmacy and it is just essential oils. So it has ginger oil, orange peel, anise seed, lavender flower, peppermint, and peppermint oil. This works better than almost anything I've ever tried for my nausea because it is essential oils and essential oils are extremely concentrated compared to a glass of peppermint tea or something like that that has all these different herbs that work together to beat nausea. When I spray it, it works better than Zofran by a lot and it works pretty immediately for me. Now I do have to spray a ton of sprays. I spray it in my mouth like 20 times, which is more than is recommended, but it's never not worked for me. I'm going to give it a 10 in terms of efficacy and a 10 in terms of experience, it tastes really good. It just tastes like mint. So this gets a 20. Highly recommend this. This is peppermint breath spray. It works for nausea a little bit and it also helps with bad breath, which is a problem that I have because of my GI issues. Sometimes my breath just gets bad. I'll be honest with you guys. This is another one where it is essential oils. So this uses peppermint, cinnamon, ginger, clove. It tastes really good and it does help with bad breath. I'm gonna give it a 10 for efficacy and a 10 for experience, honestly. This also gets a 20. I really like both of these sprays. I highly recommend both of them. 
It's not as efficacious for nausea, but it's for breath, not for nausea. So there you go. Alrighty, continuing in the peppermint sort of realm. These are IB Guard. They're peppermint pills, and they're supposed to help with just general irritable bowel syndrome. It's just very refined peppermint oil. They're a little bit pricey, honestly, but you can get them at Target or other places. I've only used them a handful of times. And to be honest, in terms of GI symptoms when I've taken these, I have noticed no difference, really. And in terms of experience when I've taken these, every time that I take these, because it is a giant capsule of peppermint oil, I always get heartburn when I take these. So I mean, if I've noticed no difference, and they give me heartburn. I kind of have to give these a zero all around. But I've heard they can help other people. But I mean, for me, it's gotta be a zero. So let's just give it a zero and move on. They're also really expensive. So I think that gives it more negative points. Moving on to digestive bitters. I have had many flavors of these in the past. These are the two that I have left. This is chamomile and ginger, and this is apple cider vinegar. But generally, digestive bitters have similar things in them. Both of these have really similar ingredients. This one has chamomile and dandelion in it. This one obviously has apple cider vinegar in it, but they both have burdock root extract, ginger root extract, and dandelion root extract. And then this one has a ginger and root extract in it, this one. This one has chamomile, I think, instead of that. So let's talk about how these work. There are times when they've worked more well for me and times when they've worked less well for me, but the times when they work, I do have to take a pretty large dose. Like I have to do two droppers instead of one, like the recommended amount to take. But when I do the two droppers, they do help a little bit with nausea and over fullness. And I feel as though they do help me digest my food a little bit better. So in terms of efficacy, I'm gonna say they get a five. In terms of experience, it's not a good experience to take these. They taste extremely bitter. Yes, they are called bitters, but they taste extremely bitter. And I have to take two droppers in order to get the effect. And the droppers are really big. The droppers go all the way down to the bottom of this. So in terms of experience, I gotta give them a three, which brings their final score to an eight. So they get an eight. I've heard they work super well for some people though. Like it's just for me, they don't work super well and they, I don't, don't like the taste. Now we have ginger root pills. I have tried a lot of ginger supplements throughout my GI journey. I have tried ginger candies, ginger teas, ginger juice. Ginger juice is my favorite way to have ginger, and I feel as though ginger juice helps the most in terms of my motility, my nausea, and general gastric distress. I feel from all of those things that ginger pills have worked the least well for me. I noticed the least effect from taking these. I have two things of ginger pills and they're both pretty full. So in terms of efficacy, I mean, they help a little bit. I'll give them a two in terms of efficacy. Again, I think ginger juice is way better. And then in terms of experience, every single time I have taken these, I have gotten heartburn. So that is a big reason why these are still pretty full. So I'm gonna give these a one in terms of experience, which means they get a three. Marshmallow root. So I have actually taken most of these. I am not sure if they help. They actually don't irritate me to take. I have never had any bad effect from taking marshmallow root. And these are supposed to soothe digestion, soothe the esophagus and the lining of the stomach. I've heard good things about these. Honestly, I have had an irritated esophagus in the past and I no longer have one. And part of getting to not having an irritated esophagus has included taking these. So I'm not gonna say they're not efficacious, but there wasn't like I noticed the difference between taking them and not taking them. They're kind of more of a subtle thing. I'll give them a five in terms of efficacy since I can't really say. And then in terms of experience, I had no bad side effects from this. I'm gonna give it a 10, which is like taking a pill. So that gives these a 15. Artichoke pills. These are supposed to help with upper GI distress, and they have been shown to help certain people that have gastroparesis, but this bottle is very full. So you're supposed to take two before every meal, and I've tried that, and I've had no effect. I haven't noticed any difference from taking the artichoke at all. I'm gonna have to give it a one in terms of efficacy, because maybe it did something, but I couldn't tell. In terms of experience, there was nothing bad about taking these, but because I had to take two before every single meal, it was kind of tedious. In terms of experience, I'm going to give it five because it was tedious. So these get a six in my opinion. Alrighty, so this is like an anti-anxiety herbal supplement. 
The reason I'm including this and some other things in here which help more so with the mental side is because the mind and the gut are very intertwined and reducing stress has been shown to help with gut health and health motility and all those things like for example being in a rest and digest state when you eat and so I got this thinking it might help with anxiety. I can't really say it helps with anxiety or not because it tastes so bad. It's got holy basil and a whole bunch of other stuff in it and it just tastes of abysmal. Like this is the worst tasting herb or something I've ever tried. So I took it once and then never took it again. I'm gonna have to give it a zero because it wasn't efficacious and it was a terrible experience. So this gets a zero. All right, moving on. So this is Iberagast. This is a really popular herbal supplement for any kind of indigestion because there have been several clinical studies on Iberagast. So it's been shown in clinical study to actually improve a lot of GI symptoms. So this is kind of seen as the gold standard of a lot of herbal supplements for GI issues. I've tried this. I didn't really notice a difference with this at all. Maybe I should have taken it more often or at a higher dose, but it doesn't taste very good. So I haven't been able to cope with it. So in terms of efficacy, I don't think I took this enough to know if it would help. And because it's been shown in clinical trial to help, and I've heard from a lot of other people, including people that have gastroparesis, that it helps them. I'm gonna have to give it a six in terms of efficacy. In terms of experience, I didn't like how it tasted, but it wasn't like abysmal. But then again, I couldn't stick to it. So I'm gonna give it a three for a total score of a nine. Now we're kind of getting into the side of herbal supplements that I bought to help with mental effects and or herbal supplements that I got to help with SIBO. When I cured my SIBO, I was primarily using herbs in the form of herbal teas. And that's gonna be in a separate video from this because I have probably as many herbal teas as I have supplements. But after I cured my SIBO, I went and I got a bunch of herbal pills because I thought I could have like an herbal pill routine to help keep my SIBO from coming back. And so that's the reason behind a lot of these herbal pills that I have here. However, I didn't really tolerate most of the pills that I got to help keep my SIBO at bay, so I haven't really taken them, and I will explain why. Starting off with licorice root. I have drank a lot of licorice tea throughout the past couple of years. I find licorice tea to be very soothing. This is like a concentrated tincture of licorice, and I took it for a couple of weeks consistently. I didn't notice a huge difference with taking it, but it was something that I got to help keep SIBO at bay more so than anything else. So in terms of efficacy, I guess I'll give it a six. I'm not sure if it really did anything, but I didn't get it to like help with a certain symptom. So I'm gonna give it a six. In terms of experience, it has an extremely strong sweet taste which was a little off-putting, but it also wasn't bad. So in terms of experience, I'm gonna give it a six, which brings the score to a 12. So this is oil of oregano. This is a powerful antibacterial, which is why a lot of times it is used in the treatment of SIBO. And this is a pretty strong dose of it. 150 milligrams is a pretty strong dose of oil of oregano. There is some debate about how long oil of oregano is safe to take. Look into that if you're thinking about taking oil of oregano. This has two months supply. I took this for a couple of weeks. In terms of efficacy, again, it's hard to rate. I don't think it, I took it long enough to really rate on efficacy, but but I know that it's used a lot in SIBO treatment. So I'm just gonna give it a six since it's hard to rate, but I know that it's used in SIBO treatment. So I think it helps other people. In terms of experience, the reason I stopped taking this was because it gave me acid reflux. And because it's oregano, it gave me acid reflux that tasted like pasta and it was really gross. So in terms of experience, I'm gonna give it two. Now I'm gonna give it a one. It was pretty bad acid reflux. So it gets a seven. All right, continuing onwards, this is sage. It's supposed to help with the immune system and with digestion. I didn't have any bad effects from taking this. It was just kind of a basic pill, but I didn't keep up with it. In terms of efficacy, I can't really rate it, but it's supposed to help with digestion, so I'm just gonna give it a six. Things that I know are supposed to work, but are kind of hard to see in terms of like helping a certain symptom, I think I'm just gonna give those things a six. And then in terms of experience, I'm going to give it an eight. And the reason I'm not gonna go higher than an eight is because part of why I didn't keep up with it is it was just hard to keep up with taking an herbal pill that I wasn't sure if it was doing anything. and I. I don't really like taking pills. They could sometimes come up due to vomiting and other issues that I have. So I'm gonna give it an eight because obviously I didn't stick with it and there was a reason for that. All right, it gets a 14. Turmeric. 
I love the brand Garden of Life when it comes to anything other than protein powder. I have several Garden of Life supplements here. This is their Maximum Strength Turmeric. It's supposed to help with joint pain. I got this just because I've heard that turmeric is just really good for gut health. I've heard that turmeric is really good for immunity. I've just heard a ton of good things about turmeric. So I got this. I thought it would just be a healthy supplement to have. I don't really have anything negative or positive to say about it. It's not like I noticed a decrease in joint pain while taking this. It, I just kind of felt neutral taking this. The reason I stopped taking it is really just because, again, taking pills is something that I find difficult and I just didn't feel like it was worth it. It's also expensive. So like if I took this every single day, I have to keep buying it and it's expensive. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give it a six and a six. I just feel pretty neutral about it and I'm not sure that it really helps anything GI wise. So it just gets a six and a six, which is a 12. It's losing points for being really expensive. Moving on to skull cap. This is supposed to relax and soothe the mind. So this is something that I got to help with stress and sleep because that's something that I've been concerned about in terms of my gut health, lowering my stress, having good sleep, all that kind of stuff. And so I got these. These are fine. I didn't really notice that they helped me sleep. I didn't really notice that they helped me relax. Like I didn't really notice any effect from these with the gut or the mind. So in terms of efficacy, I'm gonna give them a two. And then in terms of experience, I have thrown these up. It's like the way they make these herbal supplements is they take a bunch of really tiny leaves and put them in a capsule. And so I've like taken this and then thrown up a couple hours later, just a bunch of little piles of leaves. It's really gross. So in terms of experience, they get a one. So these get a three. Can't say I recommend these. Alrighty, this is fennel. This is another thing that I got just to help with digestion. I have heard really good things about fennel. Heard is in seen in, in like different research and different things like that. It's supposed to be very good for digestion. I've heard that chewing fennel seeds before you eat can be good for digestive distress. So I thought a pill would be good. I don't know if this really helps anything. It might have, it might not have. It's hard to say. So for efficacy, I'm just gonna give it a six. Hard to say, but like, People say that it's good for digestion. And then in terms of experience, I got some heartburn from this. It wasn't that bad of heartburn, but I got some heartburn from it. And the reason that I no longer take it has to do with the fact that um, pills are hard for me to take and it causes me heartburn. So I don't want to take it that well. So I'm just going to give it a three because again, the heartburn was mild. I probably could power through and take it. I'm not currently taking it. So I'm going to give it a nine. Let's see, valerian root. So this is another one that I got for sleep. Valerian can be very powerful when it comes to helping you sleep. I have had a lot of success drinking valerian tea before bed. However, I did not notice that the pill helped me sleep at all. Robert has taken this and he thinks it may have helped him sleep, but he's not sure. So our jury's kind of out on valerian pills, but I have some friends for whom it's worked for. So maybe, you know, that's kind of neutral on that. So I'm gonna give it a six in terms of efficacy. No, I'm gonna give it a five because I really don't know if it worked or not. And I think the tea is better, so it gets a five. And then in terms of experience, it has a strong smell, but that's fine. I mean, I drink the tea, which has a strong taste and I'm fine with it, but it did give me some heartburn. So many of these things gave me heartburn. So because it gave me heartburn, it has a strong smell, which could be off-putting to some people. I'm gonna give it a three in terms of experience. So it gets an eight. Again, if I was rating the actual herb, like in tea, the score would be way higher. I love valerian root tea. I just didn't find it worked as well in the pill form. All right, ashwagandha. So, this is another one that I love ashwagandha tea. I think it tastes really, really good. And that will be in the video that I make next where I discuss all of my herbs that I've tried. I love ashwagandha tea. It definitely relaxes me. I've heard just so many good things about ashwagandha and it's supposed to help with stress and mood regulation. So I got it in the pill form so that I wouldn't have to like have the tea every day. I could just have a pill. And I took these for about a month. Was I more relaxed during that month? Couldn't really say. I just, I'm not sure. So I'll give it a six, I guess. Since it, since it supports energy levels, my energy might've been better. And then in terms of experience, it's a bit of a big pill, which is part of my problem with it. I just struggle with pills a lot lately, but I did get heartburn from this. So I'll give it a six in terms of experience. I guess it's 12. It would probably be higher on the point scale, but it's expensive. Buying a big bag of ashwagandha root to make tea with is a lot cheaper than buying this. I think this was $30 or maybe was more, I'm not sure. It is a two month supply. But again, if I got really into taking this, it would be expensive. So that's part of why I didn't buy more of a lot of these is I didn't feel like the effects were worth the price. So that's why I didn't buy or keep with a lot of these. So yeah, this gets a 12. All right, this is lemon balm. 
So again, I love lemon balm tea. I have drank a lot of lemon balm tea in the past two years. As far as the pill form, the reason why I got it is it is one of the herbs that some practitioners recommend to help either cure or keep SIBO at bay. So that's part of why I bought this. I bought it at the same time as the oregano and the sage and all these other things. The main reason why I currently have it in a pill form because I wanted to get a dose that was the same every single day rather than having it in tea. Another positive thing about lemon balm is it can help with sleep and calming the mind. It's one of those calming nervines, and it can also help with GI pain. It has a lot of potential positive effects. I like it more in a tea. In a tea, I find that it calms the mind. I find that it does help with GI pain in a tea. In the pill, I didn't really notice anything. So I'm gonna give it a five in terms of efficacy because I think it could help some people, but for me, I just didn't absorb it well in a pill. And then in terms of experience, I threw up this one as well. This is another one that I threw up, so that's another reason why I don't take it. So I'm gonna give it a three in terms of experience. Like throwing it up wasn't super bad, it didn't taste that bad, but it was kind of off-putting to like throw a bunch of little leaves. So I'm gonna give it an eight. All right, Upper GI Relief. So this is from the brand Silver Fern Brand. They were all over my Instagram in 2021. And so I was highly influenced to buy a lot of their products. I bought this back in 2021. It is literally made of three ingredients aside from like the shell that comes in. It is a bunch of artichoke leek extract, a bunch of licorice, and a bunch of ginger all in here. And those are all things that are supposed to help upper GI discomfort and upper GI motility, which is why I have all of those things here in other forms. I did my own research and bought them on my own. This was expensive. It did not make a darn bit of difference. And I was upset because this product has great reviews. Like if you look at Silver Fern's website, there are all these people who are like, this saved me. I couldn't eat anything and then I was able to eat everything with this. Like this has insanely good reviews and it's supposed to help with motility in the stomach, which is the problem that I have. And it just didn't help me. So in terms of efficacy, I got to give it a two because it was expensive. I had high hopes for it and I feel like it didn't do a darn thing for me, but I'll give it a two in case it helps other people. Then in terms of experience, I also got heartburn from this, of course, because it has ginger in it. So given that it gave me heartburn, I'm going to give it a two in terms of experience. And you also have to take it like every time before you eat. So that's like another tedious thing. So you know what, it gets a one for experience, for being tedious and expensive. This gets a three. Don't recommend this product. Don't be sucked in by the reviews. Wow, we're really getting through these. So going from worst to best, we have the peppermint pills, the anxiety tincture, skull cap, ginger, artichoke, upper GI relief, oil of oregano, diberagast, lemon balm, valerian root, fennel, licorice tincture, ashwagandha, turmeric. I don't know why sage got rated higher than fennel. That seems like a mistake. I think the sage belongs here and the fennel, I did take this a good bit. This should be higher than sage. Oh, it gave me heartburn. That was why I rated it lower. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna flip these back. Those are actually fine, even though I did hit the fennel more. Marshmallow root, this is a pretty good one. And digestive enzymes, mince, breath spray, and the nausea spray, my favorite. So looking at all of these in retrospect, I definitely rated the digestive enzymes way too low. I gave these an eight. And then when I look at the other stuff that I gave an eight to, I barely took these. I had bad effects from these. So these are a true eight. Whereas when I go and think about the digestive enzymes, I went through multiple bottles of these and these helped me to an extent, you know, with nausea over fullness and stuff. So these actually helped. I actually took these. Yes, they had a bad flavor, but I still took them, went through multiple bottles of the digestive enzymes. So these should definitely be in the much higher category. I think in retrospect, I would give these like an 18 or something. I don't know, maybe a 16 because of the bad taste, but these actually helped. Whereas a lot of the stuff down at the end either didn't help or was bad. So should have rated those higher. So clearly I'm already getting tired and trying to talk about all of these supplements. These are digestive bitters. These are not digestive enzymes. We're going to talk about digestive enzymes next. The digestive bitters should have ranked higher. I retroactively give them a 16, not an 8. We are doubling their score because they worked a lot better and had way fewer bad effects, really no bad effects aside from the taste, than the stuff that I ranked an 8. So digestive bitters for the win, higher than most of this stuff. Let us continue onwards to the digestive enzymes and probiotics category. That's a good place to go since my mind is clearly already thinking about digestive enzymes. 
Alrighty, so moving on to the probiotic and digestive enzyme category. It is definitely the smallest category. And we're gonna start with this one because it is a combination of herbs and digestive enzymes. I bought this because I decided I wanted to try digestive enzymes. When I went to the store to buy digestive enzymes, this was the only thing they had at the store that I was at the day that I decided to try it. So that was really the reasoning behind buying this one. I didn't really intend to get one that had herbs with it. I was kind of looking for one that was just a digestive enzyme, but I took this for quite a while. This is the second bottle I bought of it. I took it for at least a month and it has a variety of stuff in it. It has a hundred milligrams Milligrams of digestive enzymes, a whole variety of enzymes for helping with digesting different fats, proteins, carbs, dairy, all this itself like lactases in here. And then the herbs that it includes are dandelion, gentian, beet, fennel, and cayenne pepper. I think it helped a bit. I don't think it hurt at all. It definitely helped a little bit with my overfullness. That's the main thing that it helped a little bit with, like with like the feeling of being full for super long. I felt like it helped a little bit with that. And for tolerating higher fat foods, I felt like it helped with that. So in terms of efficacy, I'm gonna give it a seven. In terms of experience, I had to take two pills with every single meal, which was kind of tedious. Additionally, I did get heartburn from this. So I had to be careful with this because it did give me heartburn. In terms of experience, I'm going to give it a five. This, I don't recall this being that expensive. So that's part of why I'm rating it higher is I felt like I could keep with it more. And that's 12. I feel like it deserves a higher score than 12 because I did take it for a whole month. So I'm gonna up to a 14 overall. Moving on, this is just purely digestive enzymes. It doesn't have any herbs in it. It is just digestive enzymes and it is a lot of enzymes. Whereas the other one that I just showed you only had 100 milligrams of digestive enzymes. A serving of this has a whole gram of digestive enzymes. So it's a really big dose of enzymes, which I think is helpful. And it's a variety of enzymes. So it's supposed to help break down anything that you could possibly eat. I've taken this before meals several times, but honestly, I started taking this really recently and my condition is worse than it has been in terms of my stomach being able to digest stuff. So I just haven't noticed a big effect from this. I feel as though if I had taken this earlier on in my GI journey, Journey, like when my stomach worked better, I might have had really good effects from it. So it's really hard for me to evaluate the efficacy because of that reason. I'm just saying it doesn't help me that much, but I think if I had taken it a year ago, it would have helped me a lot. It's also another one you take before every single meal, which I personally find tedious. In terms of efficacy, because I think it would have really helped me in the past, given how much of a high dose it is, and the fact that it doesn't give me heartburn, I'm going to give it an 8 in terms of efficacy. In terms of experience, I'm also going to give it an 8. Losing points for tedium, but no heartburn. So it gets a 16. Now we're moving on to this prebiotic. This is from Silver Fern Brand. So again, that brand that was all over my Instagram page in 2021 that I was heavily influenced by. I took this prebiotic for five to six months every single day. I started taking it two years ago. I did find that it helped me. It helped a lot with my intestinal motility, particularly. I really liked it. The reason that I stopped taking it is because as my intestines got worse, it didn't help enough that I felt it was worth the price. Again, when my condition wasn't as bad, it helped a lot. Now at this stage, it doesn't help enough that it's worth the price. So in terms of efficacy, I'm going to give it an eight since it used to help me a lot. In terms of experience, you just take three pills in the morning and I didn't have any heartburn from it. So I'm gonna give it an eight and this gets a 16 as well. One more thing I wanna say about Silver Fern brand. I used to take their ultimate probiotic as well. This, I took it for a while in 2021 and then I took it again for quite a while, like six months or so in 2022. The ultimate probiotic, just like this prebiotic, it used to work extremely well. It used to help my motility a ton. I used to notice a huge difference when I didn't take the ultimate probiotic from this brand. But as my intestinal motility got worse, it didn't help as much. And it got to the point to where I didn't really notice whether I took the probiotic or not from this brand. And their ultimate probiotic is really expensive. So I felt like it wasn't worth it. And I used up all that I had, threw away the bottle, which is why I don't have one to show you. But yeah, again, the probiotic worked when my motility wasn't as bad. Now that it is where it is, it wasn't worth the money anymore. Moving on to the probiotic that I currently am taking, which is seed. Seed is 
a probiotic that I currently take. I've been taking it for at least two months, maybe more. I gotta be honest, I freaking love it. I notice a difference if I don't take it a single day. It has more probiotics in it than the Silver Fern Ultimate Probiotic does, and it's the same price as the Silver Fern Ultimate Probiotic. So I think it's way more worth it than anything from Silver Fern. It has this, it has like a double capsule, so it like gets to your actual intestines. I just love this. I have had no bad effects from it. Well, I will say when I first started taking it, it was so powerful that it did upset my intestines, but kind of in a good way. Like it made my motility so good that my intestines were upset. So honestly, that's a good thing in my case. Efficacy, I'm gonna give it a 10. Experience, I'm going to give it eight. And the reason it only gets an eight for experience is because I dread taking the pill every morning because they have a strong, like weird taste and the pills are kind of large and I have thrown them up before. So it gets an 18. If you don't have the same problems with taking pills that I have, this would probably be a 20 for you. And that's that category. So let's arrange it. Going from best to worst, seed is the best probiotic. This is the only one that I still take though, to be honest. So seed, it's an 18, 16 on the prebiotic, plain digestive enzymes, just in general get a 16. And then this, I believe, got a 14. So our next category is going to be general supplements in terms of vitamins and minerals that I have taken over the past two years, but I'm including them because there are supplements that I've taken over the past two years and they're health related. Having proper vitamins and minerals in your body is helpful for gut health. That has been shown plenty. So I'm just gonna go through all these supplements and do them the same way I have everything else. And I'm gonna start with melatonin. I was not sure what category to put this in, so it ended up in this category. So melatonin can actually have positive effects in terms of preventing acid reflux at night, because one of the things that melatonin does is it helps the esophagus doing what it needs to do in terms of closing off things coming up from the stomach at night. That wasn't a great explanation. Just Google it for a better explanation than I can give. That is one of the reasons why I take it. Another reason why I take it is because I have trouble sleeping and getting quality sleep is important for everything in life, including gut health. Now, I like the gummies because they taste really good. This brand is really cheap and the gummies taste good and they have 10 milligrams of melatonin per serving. I think these are 10 out of 10 in terms of efficacy and I think they're 10 out of 10 in terms of experience because who doesn't want to eat a gummy before they go to bed? So these get a 20. You can find them at almost any store and they're cheap and they taste good. So that's what they get a 20 for. All right, these are zinc lozenges. They're supposed to support the immune system. And when I bought these, I think I had a cold or something. And I just heard that zinc was really good for you for immunity, for general health. I'd heard that women don't get enough of it. So I was like, oh, I should get some zinc. It says they're wild berry flavor, but they kind of taste more like vanilla to me. They don't taste very good. They're really chalky. I mean, I guess they put zinc into your body and I guess that could be good if you need it. So in terms of efficacy, I'm just gonna give them a seven. And then for experience, I'm gonna give them a four because they tasted really chalky. 11 is a good score for these. Another thing from the Silver Fern brand, another thing where I was influenced by it from ads on Instagram, da 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 da. The thing that Silver Fern advertises with this is that because it's a whole food multivitamin, they advertise that your body is going to absorb all the vitamins and minerals in it more efficaciously. And they say it's gonna be like great hair, great nails, great energy. They really go hard with advertising this. I didn't take it long enough to notice the effects. It tastes and smells so bad. It gave me the worst acid reflux and it wasn't even just acid reflux. It was like these horrible tasting burps that would last all morning. I just feel like this gets just overall a five. I'm not gonna divide it into like efficacy or experience. I didn't take it long enough to know. No, it gets a three. This tasted so bad, it smelled so bad. I'm giving it a three overall. That's all it gets is a three. Omega-3 supplement. This is an omega-3 and a vitamin D supplement. I've heard that Nordic Natural Omegas is a good brand. They supposedly only use small fishes. They supposedly third party test. It says number one fish oil brand in the USA on the package. They contain 1100 milligrams of omega threes and this contains vitamin D. And I have been told before that I'm vitamin D deficient. I don't know if I currently am, but like in the past, I've been told that. I don't think it's been tested 
in a while, but I'm just mindful of supplementing with, with vitamin D. So this just seemed like a good combination. I have gone through so many bottles of this. I struggle to take it consistently. I do like this brand. So in terms of efficacy, it's hard to say for efficacy because no one tests your omega-3 levels, but I assume it's putting omega-3 and D3 in my body. So I guess I'm gonna give it an eight in terms of efficacy. I'm gonna give it an eight in terms of experience. I took this for several months, but the reason I stopped taking it was because it's got this lemon flavor and sometimes it gives me like lemon burps that are not good. So it gets a 16, which I think is appropriate. Now, this fish supplement is a whole different thing. So Paleo Valley, I saw this on the Instagram. So I got influenced to buy this. I really should stop looking at ads on Instagram. I think it is influencing me to buy too many things that aren't helpful. That's why I'm making this video so you don't make the same mistakes that I've made. <laughs> but anyway, basically Paleo Valley's whole thing is they say that this is the best omega-3 supplement because they argue that omega-3 oils can go rancid. They're arguing that like if you buy an omega-3 supplement that has oil in it that's been sitting on the shelf, they argue that it's rancid and so like you need to get this kind which is freeze-dried fish roe so it's supposed to be like the best omega-3 supplement out there it's supposed to be super shelf stable it's just supposed to be all these amazing things for you and so i read that and i was like oh i should buy that that sounds like the best omega-3 supplement ever so anyway that's why i bought it i have never taken this so it gets to zero because i was never able to take it and that is because it smells so awful. It smells like straight up fish food. And as you guys know, I have nausea and I don't want to eat something that tastes like fish food. The other thing is one serving is six capsules. So they want you to take six fish food capsules. That does give you a lot of row powder. It's like that six capsules is like 3.6 grams, but they don't say how many omega threes it is. It just says that's the amount of powder you're getting. So I don't even know guys, I should not have bought this. I feel bad about it. But my dad said he wanted to try it. So I'm gonna give it to my dad and maybe he'll rate it higher than a zero. Multivitamin, it's another Garden of Life product. I really like Garden of Life products if it's not their protein powder. So this is a women's multivitamin. I bought it because it is a whole food multivitamin. So just like the silver fern thing, this is made up of fruits and vegetables, powders that are giving you the vitamins. So supposedly it's better absorbed and they have really high amounts of a lot of vitamins in here. And so it just seemed like a really quality product. I took this for a month or two. I think this is my second bottle that I've gotten. I didn't notice really any differences in my skin or my hair or my energy, but I enjoyed taking it. The reason I stopped taking it is because the pills smell weird. Sometimes I would have problems with vomiting them up. And once I threw these up one too many times, I couldn't take them anymore because the smell just like turned to my stomach. So I'm gonna give them like a nine in terms of efficacy. In terms of experience, I have to give them a six because of how they smelled and the fact that I threw them up. So nine plus six is 15. I'm happy with that score, 15. Moving on to magnesium pills. Magnesium is a big topic in the gut health slash general health space. Everyone talks about how magnesium is good for motility. It's, it's good for so many chemical reactions in the body. It's good for stress, good for sleep. There are a bunch of different kinds of magnesium which can do different things. Again, Google it. This is a combination of magnesium oxide magnesium citrate and magnesium sucrinate and it's 500 milligrams of magnesium per capsule and this is a hundred capsules so this has like three more than three months of magnesium in it and I like these they have no bad taste I've never thrown them up I think they help my motility a bit when I take them they don't help my sleep these ones in particular I don't notice the difference in my sleep but in terms of motility they do help I like these I take them on and off whenever I feel that I need them and I've done them for months at a time that time. So I'm going to give them an eight for efficacy and I'm going to give them a 10 for experience. I have a good experience taking these. I'm going to give them a nine. My only kind of problem with these is that it's a really high dosage of magnesium. It's 500 milligrams, which is a, it's a lot. Like I think it, it's, it's more than the daily recommended value. So if you have other pills you're taking that have magnesium or other supplements you're taking that have magnesium, I think this is like too high of a dosage in my opinion, because it's more than daily value. So I'm going to give it a nine in terms of experience because of that reason. And so now it gets a 17, which I think is fair. This is another different magnesium supplement. I don't know why I got the droplets. 
I legitimately don't know why I got the droplets. I think it was because I thought I might absorb it better because I do have trouble absorbing pills. I think you can tell that from that, like everything that's a pill, I've rated lower than things that aren't pills because it just, my stomach is trouble breaking down stuff. So I think I thought that this would like absorb better and that it might help with sleep if I took it at night. But I've been so afraid of how it might taste that I've never taken it because I'm just afraid it's gonna taste bad. So if I can overcome that fear, maybe I'll take this. Oh, it has more than just magnesium in it. It has magnesium, chloride, sodium, and potassium. Interesting. Supposedly it's a concentrated seawater complex. And I think that's why I was afraid to take it because of the word seawater. And I'm worried it was gonna taste bad. So I have to give it a zero since I've never tried it. But if you have, let me know if it tastes bad. Should I try this? Don't know. It also only has 400 milligrams of magnesium, so it doesn't exceed the RDA, which is good. So yeah, this gets a zero if I haven't tried it. Moving on from magnesium for the time being, we go to the multivitamin that I do actually take every single day. This is my favorite multivitamin. Yes, it is the teen girl formula. The reason that I buy the teen girl formula, all their formulas are pretty similar for women. In my experience, like reading the labels and stuff, there are little differences in certain vitamins, but it doesn't seem like that big of a difference to me. And the teen girl formula, you have to take four gummies and the woman's formula, you have to take six gummies and taking like less gummies or pills is always better in my opinion. The teen girl ones are also sugar coated, which makes me happy. And then and yeah, these are just a solid multivitamin and these have omega-3 in them. So it's like a, it's like a vitamin and an omega-3 supplement all in one. So in terms of efficacy, again, I can't really speak to like whether this affected my like nutrient levels. I've not like had that tested, but I'll give it an eight. And then in terms of experience, I like how these taste. I've never thrown them up. Like I really like these. So I'm gonna give these a 10 in terms of experience. So these get an 18. These are all really different things. So I'm not really sure that I can like put them in a lineup and really rank them. Like in terms of things that I still take, I still take these three things. These are the three things that I still take. Everything else, I take it occasionally or I don't take it. I've never taken these. Never taken this. I guess that'd be the ranking. I take these occasionally. I take these every day or this sometimes. Don't always say this, but I take these every day. This sometimes, these more rarely. And then I don't take these. So that's a good way to describe that, I think. We're almost to the end. Oh my gosh. Alrighty, we are entering the final two categories. So let's go. I'm gonna start with lactate. It is not something that I personally need, but it gets a mention because my husband is lactose intolerant and he finds this extremely helpful for avoiding a lot of intestinal distress. So he loves this. So we have it in our house for a gastric supplement. I guess an honorable mention. Now on to laxatives. <laughs> These are things that I need very much because I have slow intestines. We're gonna start with the laxative that I used first. This is magnesium, but what makes it different from the other types of magnesium that I've shown is the way that you're supposed to take it is you're supposed to make it into almost like a little tea. Like you make it into a beverage. You put it in water. I usually would mix it in cold water and then add hot water to it and drink it like a hot little cup of tea. And I would drink it at night because it's supposed to help you calm. It's supposed to help you sleep better. I, I did notice that taking magnesium in this form, like as a tea at night, did help with my calmness. But the reason I was taking it was to help me have more frequent, more complete, more regular bowel movements. Initially, this helped with that a lot. I felt like I was going way more often taking this. I also loved that because it was a powder that you could like measure out, I could dial in the dosage super well. So I could be like, okay, is it like a three teaspoon day or a four teaspoon day? And I could kind of figure it out. I just found that super 
super helpful because depending on how constipated I was, I would take more or I would take less. And I love that I could customize the dosage and just dial it exactly right in. I would continue to take this because again, it really only had positive effects. But the reason I stopped taking it, it's gonna come as a shock to no one. I took it during a period that I was throwing up every single night back in 2021 and the beginning of 2022. Smelling this makes me really nauseous now. And so I can't take it anymore. Additionally, I had a CT scan after I'd been taking this for several months and the CT scan showed a large stool burden. So even though this was making me more regular, making things feel softer, I still had a lot of poop in me. Like it wasn't moving my intestines enough. I can't score it that high for efficacy because I took it for months regularly and then I had this CT scan and it showed that I had a giant stool burden. From my lived experience, I felt like I was less constipated and I was going to the bathroom more. From my lived experience, I felt that it was good. But from the medical testing, I was still full of poop. So I don't know, efficacy? I'm gonna give it like a seven. For experience, I used to love taking this. I used to look forward to my cup of magnesium tea at night. It was just over time, I lost taste tolerance to it. So for experience, thinking back to when I used to take it, I'm actually gonna give it a nine because I used to seriously look forward to this every night. I used to love it. So seven plus nine is 16. And I feel like that's really fair for this. All right, moving on to the king of all laxatives, Miral Hacks. Just have used this more than any other laxative. Gastroenterologists love to freaking prescribe this for any kind of GI issue. It's the top doctor recommended brands. And in my experience, they love recommending this. It took me a long time to figure out how to take this in a way that wasn't gross. I love taking it with a fruit juice and like a lot of spindrift. Fruit juice and spindrift makes this taste good, especially if you can take one capsule and get results. I need like a third of this giant thing to get results, but that's because I have really bad motility. I don't take this regularly because now I'm on Linzes. I've also had significant stool burdens shown on x-rays while taking this regularly at a high dosage. So similar to the magnesium, unless I'm doing a colonoscopy prep level of taking this, it just doesn't get everything out for me. So in terms of efficacy for me, I'm gonna have to give it a seven. In terms of experience, like I said, it can be gross if you don't take it with like stuff that tastes good and it can have really slippery texture. So in terms of experience, I'm gonna give it a six. 13 from Miralax feels very fair. Moving on to Docolax tablets, mostly taken these in the context of colonoscopy prep, but I have taken them on their own before when I've been really constipated. They're cheap. They're a stimulant laxative. They move stuff through, but I've never felt like they give me a significant bowel movement. They tend to give me purely overflow diarrhea and it is super uncomfortable and super gross. So in terms of efficacy, I only give them a four. And in terms of experience, I mean, it's a very tiny pill. Taking it is fine, but the side effects are terrible. So in terms of experience, I'm gonna give it a three. No, I'm gonna give it a two because who wants to have overflow diarrhea? That's like painful. So I give these a six overall. All right, Senna is the last laxative that we have. And in my experience, these are exactly the same to me as the Dopalax. I get like watery overflow diarrhea. They don't actually like move anything through me. So what I read the Dopalax, a six. You know, they don't even prescribe these for colonoscopy prep. So you don't even like have the advantage of like keeping this in the house for like colonoscopy prep. So I really just never had a good experience with this. I'm gonna give it a three. Just not a fan of Senna, don't recommend. Also like this can dehydrate you, don't recommend this. All right, so that's laxatives. So yeah, I mean, best to worst, this is best. And I agree with that if it works for you. Given this is kind of gross, that's got a 13. This was unrated and then six and three. Yeah, I stand by that. I say by that ranking. Laxatives are very personal, so it's kind of hard to rank them because they work different for different people and they have different medical usages depending on what you're doing. But I see by this ranking. I approve this ranking. All right, let's get to the last category, y'all. There's only three items in the last category. Electrolytes. Let's talk about electrolytes. 
I have only tried three different kinds. I know there are a ton on the market. I have seen so many different brands. There's darn near a whole shelf of electrolytes at the store when I go. These are the three brands that I've tried. Just as with everything else, I'm gonna kind of start with the first brand that I tried, which is Liquid IV. I've tried several of the flavors. I've tried the lemon lime flavor. I've tried the strawberry. I've tried the watermelon and I've tried the tangerine. They're all pretty good. Like Liquid IV does well with their flavors. I've never really had a flavor of Liquid IV that I dislike. Unlike a lot of the newer electrolytes that are on the market, Liquid IV does include sugar in their packets. They just came out with a sugar-free brand I think a couple weeks ago but for the majority of the time they've been on the market they include sugar so they taste pretty sweet. A liquid IV is probably one of the best tasting electrolyte drinks that I've tried. However, they have a lot of extra ingredients. They have a lot of extra vitamins. Like it's not just potassium, magnesium, and, and sodium. They put B vitamins and niacin and all the other stuff in it. So it's just like, it's more of an electrolyte drink. My biggest problem with liquid IV is that it does not dissolve well in water. That is my biggest problem with it. That irritates me to no end because I'll put it in my water bottle and I'll swirl it up and I'll leave it in there overnight and I'll come back in the morning and it's just a pile of like liquid IV at the bottom of the water bottle. Like it doesn't dissolve well. And I think if you're making a product that's supposed to dissolve in water, it doesn't dissolve well in water, then that's not great. The main reason why I don't use liquid IV anymore is because it's kind of low in sodium. It's only got 500 milligrams of sodium. And the brand that I currently use, which we'll get to in a second, has a thousand milligrams of sodium. And I can only drink a certain amount of water at a time. So I don't wanna waste that small amount of water on a brand that doesn't have a high amount of sodium. So that's all my thoughts on liquid IV. In terms of a rating efficacy, I mean, I've never felt bad drinking it. It just doesn't have as much sodium as I would like. So I'm gonna give it a seven in terms of efficacy. In terms of experience, it tastes good, but it doesn't dissolve in water. So I'm going to give it, I'm gonna give it a seven turns experience as well. So Liquid IV gets a 14, which I think is really fair. Another Paleo Valley product. I really am never gonna buy from Paleo Valley again. I've never bought a product from them that I was happy with, and I don't know why I bought from them and I don't wanna do it again. But anyway, so this is kind of a weird product. They get all the electrolytes from coconut and seaweed. So it's like all from like all natural sources or whatever. But honestly, because of that, it just has a really weird flavor. It's also really gritty. It dissolves even worse in water than liquid IV. And the other thing, it's not only gritty, but it leaves these brown specks in the water. I don't know what the brown specks are. It's probably like pieces of seaweed, but it's off putting to put an electrolyte drink mix in water and then have all these brown specks in your water. It just, it kind of freaks me out. I'm like, what are all those brown specks? It also just doesn't have a great electrolyte profile. It only has 400 milligrams of sodium. Like that's less than liquid IV, a lot less sodium than LMNT. The kind of nutrient, or I guess electrolyte that it does the best in is it has more magnesium than either liquid IV or LMNT. It has 160 milligrams of magnesium, which is like 38% of the RDA. So it has a lot of magnesium, but the flavor is bad. It's kind of gritty. It has brown specks in the water. I'm not a big fan of this. I would never ever buy it again. Low in sodium, so I'm gonna give it only a six for efficacy. And then in terms of experience, I'm gonna give it a four because the taste was bad. Left those specks in the water so this gets a 10 and that that feels like okay like i if i ran out, if i ran out of everything else yes i would use this that's why i still have it in case i ran out of anything else all of this in some water but would i choose it over anything else no i wouldn't last the goat we have the one that i use every day element the reason that this is the best, in my opinion, it has thousand milligrams of sodium. It has a all right amount of potassium. The one that has the most potassium is admittedly liquid IV. Liquid IV has 370 milligrams of potassium, 8% daily value of potassium, which is much higher than either this or this. It only has half the potassium as liquid IV. So I will say that if you're like really worried about potassium, maybe go for liquid IV over element. If like you're more worried about potassium than sodium. But I'm more worried about sodium because of my suspected dysautonomia. So that's why I like this one better. And it has some magnesium. 
60 milligrams, which is about 15% of the daily RDA. It comes in a bunch of flavors. Raspberry and grapefruit are some of my favorite flavors, but I have a bunch of other flavors. Like the orange flavor is really good. The lemon habanero flavor is really good. My only problem with Element is that they use a lot of stevia. Like you can just tell that it has a really strong stevia taste. And I would honestly prefer if it had sugar in it to stevia. Like sugar does irritate my nausea. Like I can't eat a lot of sugar, but I would rather have a little bit of sugar than have so much stevia because the stevia taste does kind of exhaust me in a way. If it didn't taste so stevia-y, I would like these a little more. So that's my only criticism of Element. I recently ordered their natural unflavored flavor, which like has no stevia, no flavoring. It's just sodium, potassium, and magnesium in it. I haven't tried that yet because I've been afraid it's gonna taste bad, but they advise that you just add some fruit juice to it and they say it tastes good. If their natural unflavored tastes good with some fruit juice, then I would have no criticism, but I just haven't tried that yet. I have it. I just haven't tried it. Efficacy, I gotta give it a 10. I mean, it has the most sodium of any brand on the market. It has other electrolytes and it always helps my headaches and it helps my thought notes. So I give it a 10 for efficacy. Due to my stevia complaint in terms of experience, I give it an eight. Now I'm gonna give it a nine. The stevia complaint in all honesty is fairly small. I still like the flavors. So I'm gonna give it a nine. I just can't give it a full 20. So this gets a 19 and then the ranking element Liquid IV, Paleo Valley. That's the order in which I would prioritize these in terms of drinking them. What I wanted to do to end the video was to really just show you what supplements I believe are worth the money and worth your time. So I have them like arranged here and I'll just start here. So, so these are all the supplements that I think are the most effective and the most worth the money for me and my experience. So these are all the best ones. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for figuring out which supplements might help you and which supplements you definitely should not buy and are not worth the money. In order to make this video more of a resource for everyone that watches it, please comment down below if you agree with what I've said. If you disagree, maybe some of these supplements have worked better for you than they have for me, so let us know. Also, let us know if there are better supplements that you would advise and also, Please like and subscribe for more gastrointestinal related content and stay tuned for the follow-up video to this video where I'm going to review all of the herbal teas that I tried throughout the past two years to help with my SIBO treatment especially and also my general GI distress and GI issues. There is a lot I have to say about herbal tea. So it was very critical in my SIBO treatment and I cannot wait to get into it with you in the next video. So. Subscribe for that and thank you for watching this video.